Welcome everyone, wherever you are on this day or days after Christmas. Uh, many of us, I'm guessing, will be at home as uh, the service is being aired. So we can imagine each other, each one of us, coming into this time from our own places. Uh, such a gift to be able to do that together. Uh, not only through the wonders of the internet, but uh, through the mystery of the Spirit who connects us, who weaves us together. Well, as we settle into this time, I invite you along with me to take a moment now to be especially mindful of where you are, uh, of the land, of the, of the earth beneath your feet. For thousands of years, Coast Salish, Lagwankun-speaking peoples have been sustained in body and mind and spirit through their relationship with this land. Source of life, source of connection, uh, home to First Peoples long before and ever since we have come to be where we are. Well, our acknowledgement that we occupy unceded land can only really be authentic, I think, as we commit to learning our, our colonial history and the ongoing impacts of our privilege. And as we engage in action toward uh, reconciliation. I am grateful to be part of a congregation that is hearing this call and taking up this challenging and healing work. Well, if you have a candle there with you, I, light, I invite you to light it with me now. grace to you and peace in the name of Jesus, born among us that we might begin to fathom the mystery of God with us in our flesh, in our life, in, in every other life.
Would you join me in prayer? Radiant light, holy mystery, we begin this day in praise for the endless outpouring of yourself, calling the whole creation into life. Awaken us this day to the dawning of your love upon us, to the flow of your love in and through all life. Call us out of darkness and illumine us to see and to live in the wonder of the oneness that we are. We pray in the name of the Jesus child who leads us even now into the way of peace. Amen. A reading from the book of Psalms. Give praise to our God and sing a new song. Amid all the saints, God's praises prolong a song to your maker and ruler now raise. All children of Zion rejoice and give praise. With timbrel and harp and joyful acclaim, with gladness and mirth, we praise your great name. For now in your people, your pleasure you seek with robes of salvation adorning the meek. In glory exult, you saints of the word, with songs in the night high praises accord. Go forth in God's service, be strong in God's might to vanquish all evil and stand for the right. For this is God's word, the saints shall not fail. But over the earth, the humble prevail. All rulers and nations shall yield to their sway. To God, give the glory and sing praises. God's word is life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Christ. 
It's been my practice on the Sunday after Christmas to offer a story. This one for today, you may well have already heard it as I have heard it, uh, except that in this telling of the story, there are some details I hadn't heard before, nor the connections that are made for us in our own time. And so with thanks to Matthew Meyer Bolton, I invite you to listen to this. The nights were anything but silent. World War I, air warfare, machine guns. On December 1914, Pope Benedict XIV proposed a Christmas truce, but the political and military leaders opposed. The soldiers in the trenches had other ideas. On Christmas Eve 1914, Though the generals and the officers on both sides were insisting that hostilities continue, the young enlisted men in the trenches took matters into their own hands, risking insubordination, and in some cases risking their lives. The Germans made the first move, it is said, singing Silent Night. And then the English responded in kind, singing The First Noel. Think of those lyrics in that context. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. The artillery, machine guns, all the technologies of death had all gone quiet. All was calm. The first Noel, the angels did say, was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay. And in the fields, and in the trenches, all the way along most of the front line, clear across southern Belgium, the Germans and British troops sang to one another on the cold winter's night. After a while, some scouts ventured out onto the no man's land, the shell-blasted wasteland between the trenches. They met each other there, shook hands, wished each other a Merry Christmas, more and more followed, rising out of the trenches one by one by one. As morning came, they exchanged cigarettes and chocolate. Not a shot was fired. Someone found a soccer ball or a football, as the English called it, and a game break out, broke out between the sides. The day after Christmas, the soldiers all returned to their trenches picked up their arms and resumed hostilities. And a great many of them didn't survive that war. But those who did kept the stories alive, stories of how that Christmas day they caught sight of something much larger, something that can be scarcely named, a garden, a handshake, a piece of chocolate, a desolate field restored on earth as it is in heaven. Armistice Day, the end of World War I, would come nearly four years after that improvised, unofficial, insubordinate truce on that Christmas Eve. But the Christmas truce was a glimpse, a taste, an experience ahead of time of that stillness, that peace that was to come, the exchange of simple gifts, and an impromptu ball game, and the joy of it, the relief, the world as it should be, 
if only for a night and a day. The Christmas truce of 1914 helps us understand what Christmas is, what it means, what Emmanuel, God with us, promises. It's about the peace that comes in the midst of conflict. Even a fleeting moment, a little world in which we can experience that greater peace, God's shalom that is still to come. Not a peace enforced by fear, but the peace of God that is not simply the absence of conflict, but the presence of love, of justice, and well-being. The presence that will not only mean putting down our arms once and for all, but abandoning them, or better, transforming them. Swords into plowshares, tools for cultivating the fields. The Christmas truce of 1914 isn't just something that happened at Christmas long ago. It's a glimpse, among others, of the vision of God's shalom telling us it is for real, that it is not only on its way, but already in our midst, given into our hands, embodied in our flesh, as we risk the way of it, the outstretched hand of it, the taste of the pure joy of it. And so may we. Amen. to bear the beams of love, that we too may be an expression, an embodied expression of God with us. In our words, through our encounters, through our donations, risking ourselves for the sake of peace, 
uh, to increase one another's joy. And so we pray, receive, O God, all that we offer this day. May the light of your love be wildly at work in and through it all. Amen. As we move into a time of prayer, I invite you to open your heart to uh, the hearts of one another, to the heart of the whole creation, and the very heart of God, as we offer our prayers this day. Your generosity is staggering, gracious God, as you give yourself to the world, holding nothing back. We thank you for your word embodied, that we might hear your voice, know your heart, feel your touch, see your face, learn a new way of being human together. Into our life, we welcome your love. We give thanks for the wonder of life with you, you with us, for the multitude of ways in which you break in upon us and rise up within us. We thank you for your grace upon grace that we have known in our own flesh. In silence or aloud, we call some of those occasions of grace to mind. Into our life, we welcome your love. The wonder is that your spirit moves over the chaos of our lives so that light slivers the darkness. Old fears and hurts lose their grip. Mercy keeps turning us loose to transform anguish into wisdom, pain into solidarity, failure into freedom. Into our life, we welcome your love. The wonder is that there are those among us compassionate enough to draw near to suffering, fierce enough to stand against indifference, bold enough to venture peaceably where hostility is the order of the day. The wonder is that there are those among us compelling enough for us to join them, receptive enough in the face of generosity generous enough in the face of deep need. Into our life, we welcome your love. O oh, hope of all the world, we hold in the light of your love those people and places brought to our minds just now, in need of the grace-filled workings of your spirit. Into our life, we welcome your love. Oh God, the wonder is that you are the deepest wonder of all. So we give thanks that in all things we are not left to ourselves, but there is always and forever you, you at the heart, you breathing life and unforeseen possibility, you lending strength, you creating openings between and within us for the art of giving and receiving. Into our life, we welcome your love this day. Amen. <laughs> Once in royal David city stood a lowly cattle shed, where a mother laid her baby in a manger for his bed. Mary was that mother. Where the 
sound of muddy and war-weary men singing carols in the night across the wasteland between the trenches. That's what a Christmas carol is, what it can be, no matter where it's sung or who sings it, a hopeful, daring act of peacemaking, of reaching out through the dark, through the orders of the commanding officers to keep fighting. Every Christmas carol, an olive branch, offered with the courage to see that scorched stretch of God's forsaken earth, not as a battlefield, but a ball field, if only for a time. Not as a place of division, but as a place of reconciliation, a promised land. So may we go out singing, singing our way through this season, our eyes adjusted, to see that the vision of God's shalom is for real trusting that as it has come in part, there is yet more to come. And so may we go in peace. Amen.